build a house of any shape or size in a matter of hours? What if construction was actually rather simple and the limit to what could be built was what could be dreamt up? Hi, I'm Linwood Walker, I'm CEO of Differ, and I'm here to talk to you about automated home construction. These are questions I've thought about a lot throughout my life, especially growing up in Louisiana, where many of the arguably um, nicest architecture in the U.S. is available. I was really um, impressed down there with the um, intricate detail of the wrought iron, um, the balconies, and I wondered why these architectural styles were abandoned in modern architecture. Of course, I'm not advocating going back and rebuilding the past, but many of these ideas and many of these sensibilities I like to see in modern architecture. Um, generally, when I ask these questions, I usually find out that the answer to why these techniques aren't implemented is because craftsmanship and labor costs are so expensive now. Um, obviously, in old New Orleans, labor was relatively uh, free. Um, <laughs> um, these days, that's not quite the case. Um, through all my study, I learned about a construction technique where flat panels of wood are interlocked um, without the use of nails or screws to produce the 3D objects. While I was very impressed with this method for the design flexibility and also the efficiency of the construction process, I was disappointed with how long it took to go from the 3D model to all the components as the process involved a lot of manual calculations and input in the computer. This especially um, upset me because I could see a very clear path where any 3D model, despite the complexity, it could be a square or a complex curvy object, could all be converted into all of these interlocking components in the exact same way. And so obviously an algorithmic approach could be used so that no longer would construction be the bottleneck, but the extent of one's imagination. Of course, this would be a dramatic change from modern construction, where obviously on the construction site, there is a lot of waste. Um, about 10% of the construction materials are wasted. And also, standard two by fours have to be cut um, using saws to reduce all the pieces, whereas with this method, lasers would be used for a much more precise cut. Also, as a structure begins to look less like a four-corner box with a pitch roof, construction costs, again, continue to increase. Whereas for us, the process would allow for any design to be converted and the process of construction becomes the same regardless. Even with some alternatives to stick frame construction, such as um, prefab, um, where many of the construction efficiencies on the site are removed because of the work being done in a factory, um, it still provides a rather cumbersome um, inefficiency with the transportation, where um, <laughs> lots of work has to be done to make sure that these can actually be sent to the site. Um, other problems is that because it has to be all shipped on a truck, um, the designs have to become even more boxy in order for them to be aggregated on site. What we were hoping for is that with the use of this technology, maybe neighborhoods and the way we think about design, the way we think about how we live sustainably could be changed so that there's more creativity in design and houses can look a little bit less the same from house to house. Over time, um, I started to develop these algorithms and write many of the code, and I invited um, various people from Harvard and Tufts to join me, including um, Claudia Gold and uh, Matthew Gordon, who have worked extensively on perfecting the digital fabrication technology. So now I'm going to show you a video of exactly how this technology works. So we start out with a 3D model of a house that looks something like this. And now we're going to basically show you how we're going to use our software to convert this into all of the, 3D, all of the pieces of wood that are needed to build a house. And then those pieces will just be sent off as instructions to a laser factory where all the pieces can be cre created. So this is our house. Um, and we start with this 3D model, which an architect could have created in standard modeling software. And now the software is going to think about every um, piece of this building. So it starts out figuring out where this first wall is. And once it finds this wall, it starts to figure out where all of the internal components need to go. So it's figuring out where each rib, each vertical rib needs to go. Then it's going to do the horizontal ribs as well. And at each one of these intersections, there's a joint that's cre created, um, just like those um, pictures that Lynn showed you before, where the pieces just slide into each other. So we don't need any nails or screws. And basically, the same thing is done um, throughout the entire building. So now we're going to zoom in a little just so you can see what one of those joints looks like. Mm -hmm. 
And in this manner, we can avoid using any nails or screws when we create the house. So basically, now the software just has to do the same process on all of the other walls. Um, it's doing the roof. And you can see that even though the roof is slanted and not parallel to the floor, it's still just as simple for the, um, the joints and ribs to be created. And even the same process will occur on the floor and every one of these walls. Again, this is a, a wall that's not perpendicular or parallel to the floor, but really it's just as simple. And a curvy wall would be the exact same process, which we'll show you in a bit. Right now, we're ignoring all of the windows and doors and other openings. We're just creating all of the structural elements. And in a moment, um, it will go through and make all of those uh, necessary holes to make all of the doors and windows. So now we have all of the structural components that are necessary to create this house. So now we have all the pieces that are oh, actually. Now we have all the pieces um, that are necessary for creating the house, and they're being created now physically by the laser which is cutting out all of these components. And uh, now they'll be ready to just snap in place. Um, they'll be packed efficiently using packing algorithms and put onto these pieces of wood, and then packed and put onto trucks where they're ready to be shipped anywhere in the world. So here you can see uh, some pictures of us putting together a wall. Um, so here we're putting a rib onto part of the face of the wall, and we pound it in with a rubber mallet, the only tool that we need since we don't need hammers. So now we're putting in the ribs in the other direction, and you really see the wall starting to come together. And there's a team shot around the, around the wall. <laughs> So what is the societal impact of a revolutionary construction technology like this one? Well, the first huge benefit is environmental. Traditional construction has never been considered to be particularly environmentally friendly, largely because of the tremendous uh, you know, forests which must be cut down uh, for these gigantic old trees so that we can get these two by four boards uh, that we build our houses out of. Um, our method instead allows us to use an engineered material, um, which is known as oriented strand board. Um, and this material is made by taking chips of wood and compressing them into the sheets of lumber. Um, because we're using wood chips instead of these long planks, um, we're able to use younger and quicker growing trees, uh, and we're also able to utilize the entire tree. Um, additionally, you know, once you know, the wood goes to the laser factory. If we have any waste, we can take those, those waste chips, those, those waste boards, and recompress them right back into more oriented strand board. Um, so we really have a closed loop recycling process there. Um, additionally, because of the thin beam of the le laser and the precise automation, we're just wasting much less with our cuts in the first place. Another great use of this technology would be for uh, developing infrastructure and for disaster relief. This is a picture of Haiti after the most recent earthquake, and you can see that people are living in tents because they need a fast and affordable housing solution immediately after a disaster like this. And you can see why digital fabrication of houses would be a great solution for disaster zones. Another great advantage of digital fabrication is because of the oriented strand board that we use for these materials, you can actually put um, put flood and fire protection directly into the wood when you're producing it and compressing those wood chips into a piece of board. And that way, we can create specialized houses that are perfect for anybody in zones that, have, that are prone to those kinds of problems. Unleashing design potential. So what does this mean for the 21st century of architecture? For one, this means that more complex geometries can be built for much easier. In this picture, you see um, the process being done on a much more curvy object. Um, an object like this, under standard construction practices, would be very expensive. A lot of materials would go to waste. Um, 
a lot of um, very skilled craftsmen would be required to build a structure that's as complex as this, whereas for us it requires about the same amount of wood and about the same amount of labor as if this was a rectangular wall. Um, this usually comes out to be about 66 cents a square foot in material cost, which differs greatly from the 16 to 30 dollars a square foot that you'll traditionally pay for a standard construction. Um, as you can see here with the rotating image, there's a great deal of detail in um, how this method is able to produce these um, interlocking joints. As far as how this affects um, how we can view architecture, we view this as opening up a whole new avenue for expression and imagination. Um, design should become more um, democratic, where anyone who has a thought, an idea, should be able to design something, upload it, and that should be able to be reproduced with obscene levels of accuracy. So, <laughs> so what this should allow for is a future where we should think about our built world in a completely different way, where um, more um, organic structures with longer spans can produce environments where we can all congregate and meet and enjoy our spaces and our built environment a little bit more people should start to think about how new buildings interact with old buildings in new ways where um, old buildings become canvases for new buildings to be built upon. Even ideas of um, how organic a building can be and how a building blends in with the environment should be rethought. As we push the sustainability angle and we push the idea of buildings as a green um, product as something that um, fits in with the environment and doesn't really distract from it. The form buildings take and the way light is used and the way we appreciate our natural environment and our built environment should be rethought. Mm -hmm. And even the idea of living in the head of genius should be rethought. <laughs> um, in the future, maybe designs should become as complex as a bust of Einstein or of your grandmother, if that's the case. Um, but it should allow for a greater diversity in how we live and a greater diversity in what we build. What this means for, um, for how we view the built world is that housing should become a much more sustainable product. Um, designs should become something that is, no longer, that is now the limiting factor in what is built. Construction should no longer be that limiting factor. Um, in a lot of my architecture classes at MIT, we were constantly taught about different ways in which design could be restricted so that construction costs could be decreased. While this is a, definitely a valid view and you know, construction is a very complex system, more focus should be given to how construction technologies could be changed in the future and altered so that we can live in the things that we want to live in and not in the buildings we're told we have to live in. Um, hopefully, um, this gives you guys some new ideas about how we can um, live in the built environment and how we can rethink what we consider design and what we consider art. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.